Hi, Adrena Anzaldua here, somatic spiritual healer. The next tool that we could use for processing through triggers is going to be grounding. I find that we cannot ground our bodies whenever we are in a state of fight or flight, when we're in a state of uh, freeze. And so to try to ground your body like earlier on, this is another reason why I kind of have a problem with somatic experiencing is that I feel like it asks you to get into your body a little bit too soon if we're processing through a trigger. And so this is going to be like after you've worked through things and maybe you're not able to do the self inquiry that I mentioned into our other steps. But you are uh, maybe at a more balanced space, you're in that homeostasis, or you have the capacity to work through this trigger in a different way. And so now, if we've been able to shift our awareness, um, we can shift our focus to grounding into that energetic body. The biggest thing that I find about grounding, and I have a whole course about grounding, by the way, how you know how to ground properly and making sure that you're doing it effectively, Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. I can visualize myself drinking water from this water bottle. And I can have a very strong connection, right? I might even feel like I have drank this water. Maybe I even feel um, like I'm not thirsty anymore. However, there's a huge difference between me visualizing me drinking this water, right? My body knows, and then actually drinking it. Like my body knows literally, okay, like fine. You can visualize drinking water however, however long you want to, but you have to acknowledge that you like literally didn't drink water. Grounding is the same exact way. So I'm saying this for those of you who have perhaps really fallen into the pattern of guided visualizations for grounding, which is a perfect place to start off with. I have no problem, I did, right? I'm not harping on that. But what I am saying is that at some point we need to take those visualizations, right? Me visualizing this. And if I'm really wanting to nurture myself, I wanna nurture my body, I'm gonna actually have to drink the water. So here's how we go from visualizing our grounding to actually grounding our energetic body because there is a difference. So you visualizing roots is not putting roots into the ground. Go figure, right? You walking across the lawn barefoot, that is not grounding your energetic body. Is it earthing? Yes. Is it helping you? Yes. Is it actually grounding your energetic body into the earth negatory? So that, that's a huge misconception, I feel like, that's about grounding. So how do we take the actual visualization process? Like how do we take visualizing the roots and actually going there? So how do we do that? We do that through our felt experience. And so the easiest way to do this is to try to remember a time where you did feel really grounded. And even like take a moment to reflect, like where were you at? What were you doing? Who was around you? Basically, you're getting all of the pieces together that helped you to be grounded. And then I want you to see if you can actually access that feeling of groundedness. So just like whenever you can access that safe space, see if you can access that moment and literally like feel it into your body of whenever and, and feel that groundedness. So that is a felt experience. Okay, that is what we want to work with moving forward. So we've done visualization for a while, we feel pretty successful at it. However, what we wanna do is we want to take that, take our energy and actually allow it to expand, and actually allow it to grow. So taking that visualization and really turning it into, like you actually grounding your energetic body by doing that felt experience. So by reminding your body, hey, I've been grounded before. Now we've created a legend or a key for your body so you have an access, so a doorway, you have a memory of actually being grounded. This is where you start. You are cultivating that feeling of groundedness and then you're going to see if you can allow yourself to expand that feeling. Another misconception about grounding is that we think that grounding is easy. For any of you moms out there, if you've ever breastfed, this is going to be, I think, like the best analogy. When I first started breastfeeding, I was, I was 22. That was when I had my first baby. And I thought breastfeeding was so natural that I did not need to learn about it. Seriously, I was like, I don't need to know anything about breastfeeding because I got boobs. 
women have done this they're like for centuries and I have this well guys I didn't have it I I didn't learn the complications I didn't learn or understand like how common like cluster feeding was and 10 days into my new postpartum journey a new mom with this new baby I completely quit breastfeeding because I was like I am done like I cannot do this it's and I, got, I remember being so frustrated I was like Everybody says how natural it is. Like it wasn't natural for me. It wasn't easy. And we tend to think that something is natural. That means that it should be easy for us or that we should know exactly what to do or that we're not going to struggle. Grounding is the same thing. Psychic abilities are the same thing. They might be natural for us. We might have natural capacity. I have a natural capacity to breastfeed. I got boobs. I have nipples. They were able to produce milk, but I still needed some sort of extra support. So the next time that I had a baby, my second one, I decided to reach out to a lactation consultant prior. And I knew exactly what needed to happen. I did the same thing with my third because I had a 10 year gap, yes, 10 years, in between my second and my third baby. And I forgot, and I was like, all right, I know breastfeeding's a natural part of our body, but I also know that I've had challenges with it. And then on top of that, I know that it's been quite some time since I've done it. So I'm gonna reach out for support, I'm gonna get help. And that is kind of what you need to do with your spiritual healing journey. You might need to do this with grounding. I had a challenging time grounding for a really long time. I made significant progress on my own using somatic processes to ground, so like actually grounding my body, not visualizing the grounding. However, I knew that I could be more grounded, if that makes sense. And there was a, a resistance or there was a block or there was something that was holding me back. And so that was whenever I reached out to my teacher and I said, hey, I'm still struggling with this. And understanding that the reason why I was having more issues grounding was my body needing to release some trauma so it could feel safe enough to do so. So it could feel safe enough to feel connected into the world. And whenever I was able to understand and acknowledge, but also work with that energy, then I'm able to ground successfully. And things have been so much better and so much easier for me. And which is another reason why I think it's really important that we understand the grounding process. My name is Adrena Anzaldua. I'm the Somatic Spiritual Healer. Subscribe to my channel if you are looking for more information on practical spirituality, somatic therapy, and where the soma meets the soul. Thank you again.